Would you like to learn the secrets to getting any tech job you want, regardless of your level of experience? If so, this video is for you. My name's Mike Gibbs. I've been an enterprise architect now for about 25 years, and I've helped others just like you get your first tech job, get promoted in tech, and you can find people that I've trained at Apple, Amazon, Cisco, Google, Microsoft, Accenture, Deloitte, KPMG, Capgemini, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Pooper, Hoopers, Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, and so many other really high-end firms. Now, nearly all of them have started as solutions architects or cloud architects or enterprise architects. And I can tell you, I started my first role as a six-figure network engineer. And within three months later, I was a network architect 25 years ago. And the key is you can too. So I'll give you the insights into the system that I made 25 years ago for me that we use at GoCloud Careers. And you can use these methods uh, no matter what your career goals are. It's worked for so many over so many careers. And I'm going to share the insights into this system. So when you are coming from another industry, like I was a nurse practitioner in internal medicine, and maybe you're coming from a teacher perspective, I've helped get jobs as an architect, or a nurse perspective, or a business executive, you have to be able to think of the few things. And here's what you need to know. You have to be able to do the job, but you have to be able to do the job as good as someone that's already in the top 25% in their field. Now, why is that? See, if you have zero experience or no track record, I need to believe beyond any kind of doubt that you are great and you can do the job. So typically that means training for the top 25% skills. That's what I did when I started my networking career. I had a CCNP, I had a CCDP, and a three months later after I started my networking career, my first networking job, I was a CCIE. So I went in there with really, really strong skills. It's why when we train cloud architects and enterprise architects, et cetera, we spend at least a thousand hours training them. So that way they're in the top 25% because that way nobody cares about your experience. They see how great you are. Now, the second part of my system that I've used for decades, and this has helped people get promotions and get their first tech job, and I recommend for you, is you need to be able to focus. And here's what I mean by this. If you're going to be the best of the best, and you're going to be in the top 25%, and believe me, you can easily do this, you have to focus. So that means when others are getting 10 different associate certifications in 10 different people's careers, they will never have top 25% skills in anything. They'll always have the bottom 25% skills in every career they've tried to spread themselves so thin. So you need to focus on being great, and that means you need to focus all your time on the exact skills for your job, and none of the time on any of the things that are completely unrelated to your job. So that means you have to know what those right skills are for your job. Now, if it's a cloud architect, a security architect, an enterprise architect, an AI architect, join me on a free webinar. My team will drop the link to that in the description below. And I'll go over the exact skills and answer your questions. But what if it's not? What if you wanted to be a network engineer or a cloud engineer or whatever? What I want you to understand is that can be your first job. And the key for you is to go in there and be great. So top 25%. Now, what is a top 25% technology professional? And how does the top 25% technology professional differ from everybody else? Now, when you ask technology executives, and of course we have, and the data's out there, you can, you'll see what technology executives want in the people they hire. They don't care if someone can just configure stuff. People that can just configure the things without knowing what they're doing, why they're doing, and why they shouldn't do it are actually dangerous and often cause more harm than they actually do help. So what we're looking for in a top 25% anybody is, can the person understand the system of what we have and how one change in the system would impact the rest of the system? Can that person understand and balance trade-offs and understand the logic that there's nothing that's perfect? So the best solution is, after considering all factors, what's best for the organization as its needs. When we hire a top 25% person, they have what's called judgment. They know what to do, when to do it, and when not to do, and when not to do something. And that's more important sometimes than knowing just what to do. 
The people that have the top 25% skills can see the entire systems, its strengths, its weaknesses, its opportunities, its threats, and can figure out how to performance tune and optimize, not just build. Now, a top 25% technology professional has strong communication skills because that does two things for the organization. It avoids mistakes, which usually occur from communication, and it avoids conflicts. Now, if the team is in conflict, nobody's getting any work done, and that does not help the organization or the manager. So they're going to look for clear communication skills. They're also going to look for people that have the ability to solve problems. So they're not going to be so concerned about a yes, no answer. They're going to be able to say, can you take in all the information and can you solve problems? They're also going to be concerned about your communication skills, your presentation skills in many cases, because higher paying top 25% jobs all have presentation skills. And they're going to also be concerned about your leadership skills. So don't skip any of this in your preparation. Now, if I'm training a client, I spend hundreds of hours on these things related to communication skills, professional judgment, performance thinking. So don't skip this in your careers. So, if we understand the first thing is that you have to have top 25% skills. And that means you're going to have to find experts in the field to help coach you and teach you because you want to be in the top 25%. And if you lack experience, you can't get it from people that have never had it before and don't even know what the job is, let alone the top 25%. The second side, as I mentioned, was all those other things, that professional judgment, the communications, the leadership. And that's something also we focus when we train clients. But if you're not with us, focus on that too. Get some executive coaching. Get uh, coaching on presentation. Get coaching on interviews and sales. So do so. Now, the next thing to do is to build the right portfolio. Now, this is a place where people hurt themselves all the time. If I wanted to show myself as a physician, I would show myself doing physician things. If I was a physician and I, and I did nursing things all day long, I would be showing people that I'm a nurse, not a physician. Now, the same thing here happens. So let's say you want to build, we have to build a portfolio. I'm going to pick the cloud architect or the solutions architect right here as a, as a career to pick because that's the majority of what we work with. If a cloud architect says, here's how I built a website, they're basically showing that they know how to do a web developer's job, not a cloud architect. Now, if they, a cloud architect does a little mini Linux project, they're showing they know how to be a Linux engineer, a sysadmin, or maybe even a cloud engineer but not a cloud architect because they're showing the work that they're doing for somebody's job that's not architecture. Now, if I've got an architect that wants to build a portfolio, a cloud architect, they may be developing reference architectures for various industries or to solve various problems. They'll be creating architecture artifacts, which is what is art, 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 architectures, there are pieces of architectures that have been created. They'll be creating thought leadership documents. They will be responding to RFIs, RFPs, RFQs, that kind of thing. So that is an architecture portfolio. So if your portfolio shows you're doing cloud architect things and you can do it excellently, that shows that you're hireable for the role. If what you're showing is you're capable of doing somebody else's job, well, that doesn't build your brand. So it's knowing what the right portfolio, because when you build the right portfolio, it shows employers that you know the job and you excel at the job. When you try to say, this is my skills, I want this job, and then you show them that you can do another job, you show them that you don't even know what the job is. So make sure you do that, which means you're going to need some top 25% coaches and teachers and instructors along the way. Now, the next thing is getting a top 25% certification because when you've got no background or no experience, you need to show people that there's something special about you. So you have to have the skills. You have to have all those attributes we've talked about. And now you've got to stand out on paper. So after you have the skills, we typically recommend a top 25% certification. And here's the reason. These certifications show that you're smart because they're hard and you got to be pretty smart to pass them. They show that you're capable of learning and you're willing to go above and beyond. Now, these are attributes that hiring managers beg for. So that's why we do this. So I'll give you an example of the certifications we use in our portfolio. Let's say we're training a security architect. After we train the person to be an architect, which would be, say, 950 hours of our training, then maybe we spend another 100 hours on the CISSP certification the CCSP certification, and the CISM certification. So after the person knows, now they've got three top 25% certifications, which again, makes hiring managers want to interview them 
after they've had the skills. Maybe for a cloud architect, it might be something like the AWS Solutions Architect Professional, which is more of a sysadmin certification than an architecture certification, but most people don't realize that. TOGAF 10, which is an enterprise architecture framework around uh, digital transformation. And then maybe the CISSP to show that cloud architect understands security, at least the elements of security. And that's the certification profile I typically teach with my cloud architects. Of course, I might do the Azure Solutions Architect expert with a TOGAF and a CISSP, or a Google professional, a cloud architect with a TOGAF and a CISSP, but all top 25% certifications to show that you're willing to go above and beyond and you can learn. And that helps you a lot on your first job. If you have any gaps, they know that you might be able to learn and you have the ability to learn and the motivation to do so. Okay, so after your certifications and your brand, the next part of our system is about optimizing your resume. Now, if you're with us, obviously we teach you, but if you're not, get a resume expert to help you and get a resume expert in your field because the resume is an advertisement that says what's in it to hire you or why should a hiring manager want to interview you? So if you don't have good marketing, nobody's going to want to talk to you no matter how good your skills are. So that's why we use marketing professionals to create our how do you tune your resume content. Uh, we have a marketing expert on our team with an MBA and 30 years of marketing experience that we use to teach people this. But please get some help in it. Optimize your resume. Now, after you optimize your resume, you have to optimize your LinkedIn because that is your resume for the world. So you have to create the right kind of profile that's going to get hits, that's going to get people coming to you from recruiters that says, I want to interview you. And you have to know how to create the right kind of content that's going to have, uh, that's going to have people wanting to see you or learn more. Now, we also teach, and I recommend if you're not with us, get a coach here, have someone look at your social media most people post things on social media that makes employers run scared and they don't even realize it. So they'll post things that are not good for their brand. They'll post things that make them unhirable. So we teach you how to clean up your social media and the things to avoid it. The employers will say, uh, uh can't hire this person for this reason. So keep that in the back of your mind because employers will check your social media. And then the next part of getting hard, it's been part of my system is interview coaching. No, we obviously teach people how to interview. We teach them how to prepare for the interview, how to answer interview questions, how to highlight your strengths, mitigate your weaknesses, direct the interview for things that are good for you and properly follow up. But this is critical because it doesn't matter how good all the other things are if you're not great at the interview, especially when you lack things. So we teach our people this, but if you're not with us, get an interview coach and an expert interview coach. Because in most uh, technology uh, uh, jobs, especially architecture exams, there could be a fifty to $100,000 difference between the top and bottom paid person in the job. And as we move up into principal architect roles, for example, it could be a $250,000 difference between the top and the bottom paid person. And a lot of that is how good you are on the interview. So part of that for me, when I first transitioned, was spending hundreds of hours on the interview and learning the psychology of the interview and learning the sales perspectives in the interview, learning how to sell myself. And I took negotiation classes, et cetera. So, you know, kind of keep that in the back of your mind, get that and you're there. And then ultimately, you kind of have to learn how to negotiate a higher salary and do it strategically to get as much as you can earn for your career. So let's go over this in summary. What are the steps to really win and get any job you want? The first thing comes down to building top 25% skills. To build top 25% skills of the people that are already in the job that you want, the employer needs to hire you because they're always looking for top 25%. And at top 25%, no one can even remember your lack of experience. Now, in order to be, to be the best, you typically need to learn from the best. You can't learn from someone that I was homeless until last year and now I've got a system or the person never had a job. You have to learn from experts that have made it to principal, distinguished, VP level, chief technology level or above or whatever is the highest level in your field. The next component for you to do is to really focus and develop professional judgment. Understand the system, impacts of one part of systems, to be able to evaluate trade-offs, understand the system well enough that you know how to performance in it and you know how to solve problems. Then it's getting the right soft skills, communication skills, like presentation skills, executive communication skills for some jobs, like a security architect or a cloud architect, emotional intelligence skills, leadership skills, but really empathy, emotional intelligence, the ability to just get along and do well and bring out the best in others. So don't skip that because that's half of what employers actually look for. Then it comes to building a portfolio, the exact portfolio that shows that you're doing your job and you have expertise in your job. 
do not use someone else's job because that's showing you don't even know what the job is. Then it's going out there and getting top 25% certifications. Leave the entry-level certifications alone. Leave the, uh, uh, the basics associate-level certifications alone. Managers know they're typically not enough for any job, especially when you're brand new. So stand out, get a hardcore certification portfolio, like for a cloud architect, an AWS solutions architect professional, a TOGAF, and a CISSP, or for a security architect, a CCSP, a CISSP, and a CISO. Then once you've got all the skills and now you've got the certifications and you're ready to start going interviewing, tune up your resume, get some resume assistance, really turn that into a beautiful marketing ad that says what's in an employer for you, what's in it for the employer to bring you in. Then optimize your LinkedIn, create the right profile, create the kind of marketing collateral that gets people to come to you. Then tune up and clean your, optimize your social media, get rid of the things that would make employers run away and highlight you in your best. Because at the end of the day, employers are looking for energy, enthusiasm about the job, your ability to execute and get things done, as well as your competitiveness to be the best. So make sure you highlight yourself in that matter on your social media. We teach people how to do all these things, obviously, but if you're not with us, please get training in each of these elements. You even should get some good coaching on how to win the interview. There's a free interview guide that'll help you dramatically in the description of this video, which talks about how to prepare for an interview, how to answer interview questions. Please download it, it's free. It's in the description of this video. Um, but honestly, I would get even more than that. I would use that as a start and potentially get a professional coach because it's the difference between getting hired or not getting hired when you lack experience. And it could be 50 or $100,000 difference in your salary. So maybe invest in an interview coach if you're not with us. Now, it's probably where I thought learning how to negotiate a higher salary. I know I did in my career. Now, we treat our clients on how to do it, but uh, do that as part of our training. But if you're not with us, it might be worth spending a few thousand dollars to learn how to negotiate another forty or fifty thousand dollars. Just saying, just think about that and think about the totality of your career. If you invested in, say, negotiation training, if you weren't with us and you got another twenty thousand dollars for your first job, uh, that's already a big difference where it pays back. So don't neglect any part of this system. This is a system that I created twenty five years ago. I created it for me. And I've helped countless people at all walks of life from all backgrounds get any job that you want. Now, if you'd like to hear from me on how I train cloud architects and the way we do it, or enterprise architects or security architects or AI architects, join me on a free architecture webinar. And on this architecture webinar, I'll talk about what we do. I'll talk about the skills that you need. I'll always talk about whatever the top 25% of anything is as it pertains to certification skills, what employers talk about and what and that. We'll talk about how to skip HR and get hired when you lack experience and it's all free. And not only will we discuss that role, we'll spend at least an hour on Zoom and you can ask me any question live you want and I'll do anything I can to help you build your cloud architect, security architect, AI architect, enterprise architect, network architect career. And of course, the description for that is in the link for that is in the description of this video. Of course, many other free resources to help you start your tech career are also in this description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like. Maybe send it to a friend to help them in their technology career. Maybe subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career or your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to see you soon on another video or a webinar. <music>